Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the LFGM podcast. Let's fucking go, Mets. Um, <sighs> this, this is a low energy. This is, uh, I would say, rock bottom. So, Penny, you don't get anything going out the window. No, yeah, yeah, no, it's one no of those. Fun, no positivity. I'm about as low as I've been on this team all year, and I, I don't, you know, the the worst part about it, Matt, is I don't see it changing anytime soon. They fucking stink, man. They suck. They and just so everyone knows, we're filming this. It is a, a a Wednesday afternoon. We are in between game one and two of the doubleheader. The Mets just lost to the St. Louis Cardinals four to one. Um, they had two singles in the entire seven inning game. Two hits, two singles. So I they- mean, it, it, watching them, I've never seen so many boring games in my life. Um, I mean, I said it last week again. I really don't have much to say because it's the same fucking loss over and over again. It's brutal, man, it's brutal. I, I will say, and like you listen to it on the radio, like yeah, what is up with replay now, man? Like what? Like that is, is that is that helpful at this point? Because watching it was probably I, I don't know how it was on the radio, but watching it was like. Okay, I'll go cook a forty-five minute dinner. Then. Well, dude, it was it was brutal. Like how he was killing them. Like so. The way it was explained was that um, – so I, I guess they had um, an Asian pitcher on the mound. I think he was Korean. Yeah, yeah. Japanese. And, and the um, the uh, the translator goes out to the mound. That should have counted as a mound visit. Yeah. But, because, but they they the umpires did not call it a mound visit. Therefore, they were allowed to give the second one. Which makes no fucking sense. <laughs> no, so, yeah. You have, you have this five-minute delay just to realize you fucked up and to not change anything? No, you couldn't, though. No, this is what happened. No, so, but that's fine. Don't change it. But, like, wh- why do we just waste five minutes? No, I'm saying, but, like, this is what happened. They, the, the, guy, the interpreter went out for a mound visit because the whole infield got called in, right? right. So – it, they were just like, well, we're, this guy's not – the pitcher's yeah, not going to know what we're talking that. about. So they put him out on the mound. He comes back. The guy was all over the place. The The pitcher was all over the place. I, like, he was not throwing strikes at all. I liked their chances for a split second. And then, um, you know, they went for another mound visit uninterrupted. They right. didn't even like – it wasn't even like, oh, sh- are we allowed to do this? They just went. Right. And they came back, and then that's when – they questioned it and they were like, wait, he shouldn't that that shouldn't have happened. Yeah, or crazy man. Um but why so they gave it to him, right? And then and then it, they just went up to Rojas pretty much like to just cover themselves. Like they probably said, like, my bad, I we fucked yeah, up. Yeah, we messed up. So I guess in the rule book, how he was saying on the radio, um, when I was in the car, he was like, I and how he didn't even know this either, but um any uh, anytime an interpreter goes out, they have to go with a coach. So I, yeah. I didn't know that either. But like, if you're the St. Louis Cardinals and you have the interpreter, shouldn't you know that rule? I mean, it's common. I mean, I've never. When you think about it, it's pretty common sense. So, have you ever seen an interpreter just walk no, out there? No, I've no. never seen it before. Right, so I was right. like, uh, okay, like maybe this so, guy's like a pitching coach too. I don't know. Right, right. But like, I mean, not even that. But like the the Coaches could have said, like, hey, can you go tell him this? Like, that's a mound visit. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, I don't know. It's not like it was changing the outcome of the game by any means because this team fucking can't hit. It's unbelievable. It, it, it's, it's disgusting. Dude, I get like on base, on base, on base, but like you, you're not walking four times in an inning to score a run. Sooner or later, you got to string together some hits and like make a team pay. I mean, this is just, it's, and this is what you go back to to you saying, like, it's watching the same fucking shit over and over again. Like, yeah, it is. You're watching strikeouts. You're watching guys barely hit, like, make weak contact with the ball. And then you're watching guys walk and get their fucking on-base percentage up. No wonder why guys got a 350 on-base percentage and they're batting 180. And Francisco Lindor, can we, can we talk about him for a second? Because we have kind of defended him the almost, I would say, the entire time. 
I'm fucking done, man. I'm fucking done. You're over your last 24, 25, and now you can't throw the ball to first base? Sit down. Sit down. Because you're not Conforto, helping the team. Conforto just made a nice throw, too, that he didn't scoop and tag the guy. I was like, was, dude, dude you got to do something, team. man. You got to do – he should probably sit this second game. Yes. I, I, I mean, I, I thought he should have sat the first one. Just clear, like, you need some space. I don't know. Like, maybe you need to hold day. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the lineup tonight. But you have to give him a day at some point. Yeah, man. and Rojas, Rojas was on with Carton and Roberts earlier today. And they asked him, like, have you thought about moving him down? Rojas laughed. He's like, no, why would I move him down? What do you mean, why would you not move him down in the lineup? He can't hit the ball. He can't. He's hitting dribblers. I can hit the ball farther than him. Yeah, this is bad. This is really bad. I've never seen, like, yo, line out to – center field or something i don't know do something contact at this point i like i'm i'm i would be i i dude i try to watch every game i'm gonna have to fucking will myself to watch this game tonight like someone's gonna have to strap me down to the couch and glue my eyes open this whole play game too (laughs) man and we're what like 25 games into the season something like that like holy shit I'm I'm so fed up. This team has no heart. They have no fight. And I think it's it's top down. It's not bottom up. They're so fucking bland. Blah. We have to make up a fake hitting coach, a hitting approach coach to have some fun. Fuck that. I think that's trash too. Donnie Diesel can go sit on it. Your Pete, your imaginary friend. Well, what are we doing? Win some games. All right, that was just you were lashing out. You were just lashing out there. I don't it, like the. I think the hitting coach is cool. I mean, would have been cooler if cool? they just kept the real one. How about win uh, a game? I think winning a game is cool. I yeah, I get it, but I mean, that's not what's losing them games though. <laughs> like them, ha- you know, they're, that's not what's losing them games is is making up stuff like that. They're losing games because they're n- they're pretty bad. With hitting, they're pretty bad on defense right now. They they don't steal bases. There's zero situational hitting. No, they never do. Why? Like, what are we watching, man? It's like watching American League baseball with really good pitching. Like, guys, you can't have the best of both worlds. You have a really good pitching staff. Scratch out some runs. I don't it's know. Like watching the Orioles. Holy shit! It's 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 dude. It's, it, is, it's, it, it's, it is American League style play. With no runs, though. So it's like the Orioles. No runs. Because because you only have eight hitters in the lineup. What? Scratch that. You have two fucking hitters in the lineup, and everybody else is an automatic out. It's unbelievable. It's It's, unreal. It's bad. I mean, you got to just sit half the guys for this double header right now. I mean, just like you play Nito again. You know, at least he got, what, did he get fucking hit or something yesterday for a run? Or he walked or something? Like, I don't even care at this point. But you got to play him the second game. You got to, but I like VR because he gets on base a decent amount. He's fun to watch. He's got some speed. He's yeah, sweet. like even when he's he was like taking everything. that lead a couple uh, a couple games ago, you know, and talk about like his- helping out the hitters with that. So it's like little things like that. I mean, I would like him to steal at some point. But um, the base running against Philly too, when he went from fir- uh, first. Yeah, to- that was good. It's just good. good. That's exciting baseball. That's fun. That's enjoyable. I can watch that. Who else in this lineup is doing that? Francisco Lindor? Yeah, he can't get on fucking base, though. I I mean, it's it's unreal. That's Uh, that's that's a wild. So they got odds now on SNY. It's pretty funny that like they the odds for Lindor to get a hit. It's got to be like plus five hundred. No, it it was minus two ten. Like, who would take that, though? That's insane. But it's like you expect the guy to get a hit at some point. Sooner or later. I I mean, he can't go 0 for the rest of his, you know, 11 years here in Queens. I mean, I'm, well, I mean, he does the same thing over and over again. It's like he just – he bails out every single time yeah, yeah. and dribbles the ball. Like he, He's a pitcher. Bro, twice to uh, lefty and righty, both sides. First, like, first pitch one time. I, that pisses me off. If you're going to swing at the first pitch, fucking rope it. Well, that's McNeil's problem, too. And he's roped it before, too. But even then, right. it's like, dude, all right, man. Like, you got to 
uh, put together an at bat here. Yeah, right? yeah. Nimmo, but, Nimmo I mean, is a professional hitter. Pete, you take the home runs, but you also take the strikeouts. I think Conforto's starting to come around a little bit. But man, the rest of this team, I, I don't know. I don't know. I and like I'm usually pretty positive and optimistic, but this is I mean, and they're only two games under five hundred. They're just the last two weeks have been just awful. Just horrendous, horrendous baseball. And that's why coaches are getting fired. Chili's gone and Slater's gone. Um I, I and we kind of called that last week. I mean, the last podcast we did, yeah. we talked about Chili Davis being on the hot seat. I thought he had one more week left. I didn't think he had, you know, but I did. I didn't think he had a lot of leash, but I did think he had one more week left. Yeah, so did um, I. I thought it was a little. I mean, there were twenty three games into the season when they canned him. Um, it sounds like what it sounds like is just like you know he put the work in with the players because I you know I have my doubts about that because like who knows like if he got back from COVID, right. you know, you've heard of hitting coaches showing up like. Like Barry Bonds got fired because he showed yeah, up like 30 he minutes that. before every game. Yeah. He, he just wouldn't work with the guys. Yeah. But it wasn't that wasn't the case with Chile. It sounds like that, like, which is kind of like a front office this like bad decision where they were just like, all right, this guy has had success in the past. We don't agree with his approach because we're more analytical now right. and he's more traditional. So if he fails within these next month, you know, within these first couple months, we'll probably just get rid of him and get our own guy right. in. And I mean, I think the players, players really liked him. The players wanted him. They had success with him um, in the past. It just – I mean, it really just didn't work out. I mean, they, they want an analytical guy, so they bring in an analytical guy in Hugh Quattlebaum, and uh, Kevin Howard's going to be the assistant hitting coach. But, yeah, I, I mean – I thought it was a little premature. I, mean, I was here last week saying, like, I, the hitting coach is not the problem. It's it's guys need to be held accountable and held responsible for their actions or lack thereof. Guys are not hitting, move them down in the order. Guys are not hitting, sit them a day, spell them a day, get them out of the lineup. We need a spark. There is no spark in complacency and doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. You got to try to mix things up and hitting Kevin Pilar fourth in the lineup. That ain't it. That's not the mix up this fucking team needs. I'll tell you. That was so weird. I'm looking at that right now. It's It's so weird. Remember when John Mayberry Jr. batted cleanup for us in in 2015 and we were like, holy shit, like this team is going nowhere. Yeah. It's unbelievable, man. Um, Paul D. Paul DeYoung strikes again. He's like a modern day Penny. Paul DeYoung is a modern day Chipper Jones, man. He I know. Had, he, guys, he's got nine home runs against us in, in like, I, I think it's the or 90 at bats, something like that. Nine or 10 home runs. It's, dude, is it's unreal. I thought Pilar was going to, I think it was Pilar. Yeah, it was Pilar. You thought Pilar was going to catch it? Yeah, because uh, he he like it was weird. I think he hit his glove while he was going up because he really? jumped and he just came down right away. So I think like it juts out a little bit at the top, like the pad, and I think he just like put his glove under it. And I because he could have had it. I think it was like you know, and he, it was like up in the air for a while. So like he could have camped under it, and you know, kind of sucks. But I mean, it would have been a sick play if he did it. But yeah. um, I mean, like, back to the hitting coach, though. Like, the hitting coach, you know, he's not the – you know, you're not going to be the problem for them. You're not going to be the solution either, though. You're you're not going to be the solution either. And, like, even Keith said something. It's like, my opinion, hitting coaches can only hurt you. Like, I, I get that to a certain extent, especially when you're a veteran. We have a lot of young guys. Um, I – yeah, but at the same it's time, tough to see like a hitting coach solving this. Yeah, is yeah, yeah. what I'm saying. You know, like he. I mean, he was a scapegoat. Let's be honest. Teams, teams, not you know, not meeting expectations, and someone needed to be held responsible. That's what it came down to. But Keith, for Keith to say that, that's a little hypocritical because anytime Keith would struggle, he would call his dad, and his dad would tell him how to fix it. So his dad was his hitting coach. Um, I got I got a lineup for game two here. You want to hear it? 
Maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're getting it. <laughs> um, McNeil's in the one slot. Alonzo, two. Conforto, three. Dom Smith gets the start. Uh, he's hitting cleanup. Uh, Pilar playing center. He's batting fifth. Um, here's an interesting one. Jonathan VR is batting sixth and playing shortstop. Good. Yep, which means uh, Jose Peraza gets his first start. He's playing third base and batting seventh, and Tomas Nito catching batting eighth with Miguel Castro in the nine hole. Uh, so your spell – Castro's not going to hit though, is he? Like No, no. Though, I think they want to get him, you know – as deep as they can, and then when he comes up in, in the order, they'll pinch hit, and then I think Yamamoto is going to come out of the bullpen. If he if he hits, <laughs> then we're doing something decent. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right? They said, dude, they said that he's never had a professional at bat, minor leagues or anything. <laughs> yeah, no. He better, I mean, if he hits tonight, we're going to have a problem. No, like, it's going to be a good thing because then maybe we bat around the order in the first. <laughs> maybe, maybe that is a good thing. I, God. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think the idea is if you can get Castro to pitch two innings and then his spot comes up in the lineup and then you can pinch hit um, and then yeah. Yamamoto come in, you can even double switch at that point in the game. I don't know if they want to waste a spot um, to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think Yamamoto is going to get most of the, the, later innings tonight. Uh, the Cardinals did use Gallegos and Reyes, who has yet to let up a run this year. Um, so those guys will be done for the night. So we'll see the back end of their bullpen um, instead of the, the uh, you know, their top notch guys. Um, I kind of like that, dude. I mean, I just said, you got to hold people accountable. They're sitting in the door. Nito's obviously going to catch game two. Yeah, you can't catch two. Yeah. Um, Dom Smith gets back in the lineup. Uh, Pilar stays in center. So I guess there's something pretty, pretty, you know, if he's playing both games. Day's hurt. Nimmo's hurt. Nimmo's hurting. And they're trying to keep him off the, the 10 day because uh, J.D. Davis just went back on the 10 day. Um, and Sean Reed Foley will probably pitch tonight. I would no, he, dude, he got oh. options. Yeah. Yeah, but they just called him up. This the doubleheader. They get the extra person. Oh, they did? Okay. So I think they'll use him and then, make, you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if either him or Yamamoto gets sent back down after. Or Luke Casey because he was horrible. Getting <laughs> it was pretty bad. He Nolan was Arenado bad. at that, I'm just like, oh, God. Oh, my God. He's yeah. horrible. Everything. He's on everything. Just walk him. I know. Well, I mean, we have we have essentially the, you know, this game should be ours. I didn't even know Peraza was on this team until I saw uh, yeah, he hit the other night. Pinch hit. No, yeah, until I saw that. I didn't know that he was like at our uh other site. They um, do a really poor oh. job announcing the uh the call ups and stuff like that. Yeah, they, they don't sure. like they don't tweet about it. Yeah, you got to look on the – if you get the MLB app and then you can, like, select the Mets as your favorite team, they will they go through, like, um, okay. all the um, – like, I could pull it up right now. More I – mean, Mets, Mets Twitter, you would think, would just, like, announce these things. They don't really do that. It's no, they don't. Bizarre. They'll just do, like, dumb they shit. Transactions here. Uh, Nimmo actually was just placed on the 10-day. So there you go. All right. Well, they they recalled uh, Patrick Meziaka, the catcher, for Nimmo. So I guess we have three catchers right now. I mean, that's fine. I, it was weird with Nimmo just because, uh, you know, they must have just done that because before game one, Rojas was acting yeah. a little – like he didn't answer questions about whether he was available or not. He's like very coy about it because yeah. he probably didn't know, honestly. He probably just went into the press or was like, I have no idea if this guy's – Wednesday, May 5th, so – you got yes. Nimmo on the 10-day, um, uh, J.D. Davis now on the 10-day. And, and good news in Mets land, it sounds like Carrasco is, is you know, rearing his head. It sounds like he's pretty close. He threw a six-inning simulated game the other day. How does he swing uh, the bat? Jesus, I <laughs> – he should just stand there and never swing the bat. Um, Center. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if – you know, 10 days max, I, I think we could see him. And then, you know, that really is going to help square up, you know, the back end of the rotation because we really don't – I mean, the fifth starter spot has been an issue at this yeah. point. Yeah, well, even then, like, 
I'm all good with the like Lucchese struggling or Yamamoto getting thrown out there and taking a beating. It, like it is what it is because we got Carrasco and Noah coming back. The hitting and and now That's the defense bad. is just like so bad. I actually miss. I wish we had Noah tonight just to uh, possibly like pinch hit for like Castro or something early on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Seriously though, because he, he can hit. What I mean, if Degrom wasn't hurt, I would send him up there. And like that's how you could kind of save one of these guys. And like you said, save your bench. The option of like double switching. Listen, if 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 we have runners on and we we need to do something like that, you know what I mean? Where we need a at bat. I don't care if it's the first inning. I don't care if it's the third. Like do it. Do it. You gotta score some runs at this point. You gotta get gritty. You gotta get nasty, and you gotta do what you gotta do, man. I don't care. Like, you got to grind some shit out right now because they're going to start falling too far back. And when they get hot come, I don't know, mid-June or, or July, it ain't going to matter if they August keep third. Yeah, it ain't going to matter. I love doing that. With this team time and time again, you know, like like you, you can't drown here in, in the first two months. Like, you got to stay afloat, even if that means playing 500 ball, which they haven't been doing the last two weeks which is why we're in this shit-ass mood right now. Um, game two is probably going to start, I would think, in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, we got – so we got uh, today the game two with the Cardinals, and then we got another one with the Cards tomorrow. It's an early game, a 1 o'clock game. one ten, I think, is first pitch tomorrow. Um, and then it's three with the D-backs back at home and then two with the, the Baltimore Orioles back home. And you know who is slated to pitch for the Baltimore Orioles back at City Field for the first time is the Dark Knight Returns. It's been pretty good. I know, man. I know. I'm happy for if there's anybody oh, yeah. that truly deserves. Like he's been through it all. Uh, he had fucking rib cages taken out, Tommy John surgery, like – I'm just happy he's actually getting a chance, and uh, he's he's you know he's he had he's had to readjust. He's not the power thrower that he used to be. He's a finesse guy. He picks at corners. He gives you five, maybe six innings tops. Uh, yes. He's not a strikeout pitcher anymore. Um, but he he's really had to change his game and adjust. And like, dude, good for Matt Harvey. I mean, if any if, if there's anybody that I wish like best like. And I, I don't know him personally. I've heard, you know, stories of him partying and whatever. Like, dude, he was young and in New York. Like, we didn't fucking do that. Good good for Matt Harvey for, you know, putting it all back together and performing on a big league level. Yeah. No, I'm happy for him. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Probably throw nine scoreless against us. Okay, right? <laughs> if there's one game where these guys don't hit, that one. Like, that's the one. That is the one. Pick the under on that. Dude, they'll, you know what's going to happen? That's going to be the one game they do fucking hit. <laughs> probably. Probably. Oh, God. Anyways, you want to talk? I mean, this happened so long ago, but Jose Alvarado and Dom Smith, did you have any thoughts on that? Just like your quick reaction? I mean, it's not over, you know? No, I know. The only thing, it's not the over. The problem is, and I think a lot of this, like the schedule makers have, have something to do with this. It's because – We've had three series with the Phillies already this year. That's half, you know, that's that's nine games early on. Nine of our first, what, 25? Like, when you play the same team over and over and over again like that, you get sick of them. And we've beaten the Phillies more than we've, you know, lost to them, uh, more than they've beaten us. Um, and Al- Alvarado, this went back to Dom Smith was in the dugout chirping at him when, when Alvarado hit uh, Conforto. Um, so... I mean, Dom, you, you said, you know, afterwards, you come find me, you know, go do something in person, man. I, I, I was all for that, for them, you know, get a little rowdy. They they offered you a spark and you guys kind of turned it down to, to, to yap and be like little fucking hummingbirds out there. Yeah, a lot of people got on them for that. I mean, I personally, I don't think Dom really saw what he did until like he was yeah. half. No, I agree with that too. I was like, all right, well, he's walking towards him now because he's trying to hear what he's saying, and then it's broken up. So yeah. I I don't think it's anything, you know. It ain't over though. You're being right. scared. Yeah. But no, no, it's going to continue. And like this dude, I wouldn't want to hit against him. He's all over the place throwing yeah. 96. Like yeah. he's all over the place. 
it was nice to uh i mean listen we got him back we got him back in the meantime yeah, we, yeah. we you know we scored those runs off him and ultimately got the win off of him yeah they won that game which was nice a little comeback win um pete had the uh the bases loaded double that game when he hits line drives the opposite field like that like it, it gets me hard i love seeing him rip like like none of these fucking little 200 foot pop-ups that go 9,000 feet in the air like hit line drives man like that yeah. he, he ropes the ball he must have hit the ball 115 miles an hour like easily then then you're like randy from south park um, I guess so. Thank you for that. Um, do you had homework? Do you remember what your homework was? Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> you motherfucker! I didn't text you on purpose. Why, dude? That's not. <laughs> Wanted to see if you remembered your homework. It was a teachable moment. We're not here to teach me responsibility. Yeah, I'm 32. Yeah. I don't have it. Okay. Well, I'll give you mine. I, I'll give you mine, and then I you can go. I can go. Go ahead. Um, Mount Rushmore, it's four, right? <laughs> Dude, are you kidding? <laughs> I'm so happy that was on tape. Mount Rushmore in the top four, you jackass. Oh, man. Okay, I'm trying to type on I don't even have a thing I could type on this computer. <laughs> uh, I can write it for you. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I mean, I can count to four, too, in my head. Intro song. So any pitchers? Um, or anybody walking to the plate batters. Anything. Okay. Yeah. Do I, I so with Mount Rushmore, I don't necessarily do a four, three, two, one, right? No, I, I would one. just go your top four. That's the way I always think of it. Okay. So I'm going, and this is at the very top. The okay. very, 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 very top. And this is my this is my best one. I'm just gonna put it out there. All right. It's uh Billy okay. Wagner. Okay. Did you have that? No. Because I, I do think it's a little bit like you had the same song as Mariano Rivera, but it plays with him. It 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 plays with him very well, and he did so well with it. Enter Sandman's good. Yeah, I it, like it. It never. It always got me going. That's okay. The thing. So you got so. Right your one Enter Sandman. That's good. Can't argue that. Yeah, I mean, you got to put, and I know you have this too, is uh, David Wright 5 on it. David Wright's in mine. I got 5 on it. Nice. Good job. Um, I did like uh, Mike Piazza, I believe. He Whoa. had uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix. Really? He had was Voodoo Child. Child. Which one? It was Voodoo Child. Yeah, I think he had Voodoo Child. I, I know. Uh, I think Degrom does all along the Watchtower. Yeah, that's a, that's another good one, honestly. Yeah. Piazza, okay, with Voodoo Child. Um, like I can't put Edwin in there yet, just cause. No, I know it's it's been been a year, right? But, but that's it plays, man. When the trumpets hit and Gary starts talking about blaster jacks, hoo hoo hoo. <laughs> it's really good, man. It's really good. He just needs time with it, you know, because you can't. That's the thing, too, is um, like you have to be decent. You yeah. have to be decent. I hope so, the back, speaking of Edwin, I hope the back tightness is OK because he's been actually really good. Yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I hope so. um, and then my fourth. <sighs> this is tough. This is I got a few in my head. Um, and they're all from pretty much like the same, I guess the same like team almost pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, what was, I'm trying to think of the name of Beltrans because he had something kind of similar to Edwin. Oh, Beltrans, Beltrans in mine. I'll, I'll do Beltrans. So you want okay. Beltrans as your four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I like Beltran, but I could go, I could go, I believe Laduca had, um, what did he have? He had. I don't know his. I don't. Remember oh, he had name. staying alive. Oh, that's a good one too. It's that's kind of a good one. Yeah. Um, all right. So I got. I'll start with the two. The two kind of repeats. Uh, David Wright. I got five on it. Is a classic. And then uh, Beltrons was El Esta Aquí. Yeah. El Estaki. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. El Estaki. That's a great one. 
Um, that that it was like my all time favorite. Like I'll randomly send that YouTube video to Cameron <laughs> just to get a reaction out of him. Um, okay, my other two. You're gonna like one. You're gonna hate the other one. And then I'll, I'll give him like my fifth optional, like you did with Laduca. Okay, you want the one you're gonna like or the one you're gonna hate first? Hate. Hate is gonna be um, one of the best backup catchers in New York Met history. Ramon Castro would walk up to the Imperial March. It was the Darth Vader theme song. Oh, His fat ass would walk up to yeah. the gate. It's actually hilarious. And it's very fitting. I remember that now. That was pretty good. You, go, you remember his long ass bat? He must have swung like a 36 inch bat too. <laughs> he would walk and it, he would just drag it on the ground. Drag it on the floor. I know. <laughs> right, last one, you're going to love this one. Anthony Recker. I came in like a wrecking ball. Oh, jeez, yeah. Classic, classic. Yeah. Although Anthony Recker can sit on it. I don't like him on S&Y. <laughs> Anthony Recker is player hater of the year, like Chappelle. Literally, he hates everyone. <laughs> he hates everyone. It's unbelievable. He, like, I, I almost, like, I watch him. I'm like, damn, like. Who does he like? Yeah, he just like crushes well, everyone. That's kind of like what we're doing right now. I mean, what, do we say anything positive today? No, no. Well, maybe he's right. I mean, yeah, they don't deserve anything positive right now. My fifth optional one would be Noah Syndergaard coming out to the Game of Thrones theme song. That's pretty badass. Was pretty he was badass. in Game of Thrones too, so it's kind of cool. Um, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't star in it. He starred in Die Hard. Oh, Noah Syndergaard, aka oh, yeah. from Die Hard. Um, um, anyways, I'll leave you with not Mets trivia, but a little kind of Mets update, and then we'll go watch the Mets lose game too, because that's where I'm at with my Mets optimism right now. Um, <clears throat> a New York Metropolitan was just inducted into the St. Louis Cardinals Hall of Fame. Our own Keith Hernandez was inducted into the Cardinals Hall of Fame today. A long time coming. It's about time the Cardinals recognize him for his uh, years and his dedication and his service to the Cardinals. Uh, the 1979 MVP, uh, the multiple time gold glove winner, Keith Hernandez, uh, joins a second team's Hall of Fame. Um, and I think it just kind of bolsters the case for him for Cooperstown, which he'll unfortunately have to be like one of those optional write-ins because he's no longer on the card. Um, but Keith, congrats, man. We love you. Keep up the good work. Um, and, and, uh, it's a, it's a, you know, a big honor for him. So happy for Keith. Yeah, no, they, they showed him on the broadcast too. in one of those sick, uh, you know, those like, Almost like box hats. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Stripes. I was like, damn, that was a while ago. Long time ago. Keith Keith yeah. knocking the stirrups. Yeah. Lewis. What a guy. What a career. The mids and the stirrups. Love it. All right, Matt. You got anything else? No, I got nothing. I hope. I, I really hope we have a good week. Because if they don't, I, I don't know where, where we go from here. Yeah. You got to give us something. If you want to see, me, if you and this is a joke, so nobody take it seriously. But if you want to see two guys on the suicide hotline next week, you can tune into the next episode of LFGM podcast because <laughs> it's it's getting to that point with them. Like I don't know if I could do 162 games of this. No, no, I need I need something for this next one. All right, Jose Peraza is going to be our spark plug. I feel it. <laughs> I, feel it. I feel it. Yeah. All right. And on that note. <laughs> on that note, we'll put it in the books. <laughs>